Welcome back, everyone, and this is week 13 of our Sweet Childhood Memories Sew Along, hosted by Pat Sloan at her website, I love to make quilts.com. I'm sorry I haven't been doing the talking head at the start of these videos lately, but I have been a bit too lazy to do my personal grooming, and my hair and beard are an absolute mess. So, my voice at this stage is all you get. My outros have all been previously filmed, and I'm just reusing them. If you haven't done so already, jump over to Pat's website, download this week's free pattern, come back here, and I'll show you how to do it. As we do every week, folks, we start with all of our pieces cut out, and this week I have cut everything as per the pattern. You can see all my pieces here. I've got my... Uh, half square triangles for my leaves, the half square triangles for the top of the tulip and what I was just pointing out there was the body of the tulip which will get a sew and flip on the base of it. We're going to sit all of those aside and start where we always do with making our half square triangles. To make our half square triangles we draw a diagonal line from corner to corner in one direction on the back of one piece of our fabric and then we match that right sides together with our other piece and we take it to the machine and we sew one quarter of an inch on each side of this drawn line. With our stitching now done we take it over to our pressing mat and just press to set the stitches first before slicing it in half. That's optional, it's just the way that I prefer to do it of late. So we'll take these and we'll cut them in half along our drawn line and then we'll press all of these towards the darker of the two fabrics. We now need to trim down our half square triangles and please pay attention as you are trimming these down to two different sizes. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I like to trim my half square triangles two at a time. And I do this by making sure that I have my two pieces nicely nested and making sure that that is very snug. I then take my six and a half inch square ruler and I place the diagonal line from the ruler on my stitching line. I then ensure that I have enough fabric outside my trim down requirement on all four sides before trimming away the first two sides. We'll then rotate the block and place the ruler back making sure that we've got our diagonal line still lined up and this time we can use our trim down measurement to place on our freshly trimmed sides before trimming the final two sides. Repeat for your other set of half square triangles. Let's now move on to putting the sew and flip on the bottom of the body of our tulip. To do our sew and flip we need to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on our small square. We then place that on our large rectangle and make sure that all of our edges are lined up nicely. We'll then take this to the machine and sew one thread width to the right of our drawn line. The reason I like to sew to the outside or to the right of my drawn line is to allow for the fabric that is taken up from the actual thread when we fold this back over, which we're doing now. We'll fold this over and make sure that all of our edges line up nicely before giving it a press and trimming away the back two layers. future Kendall popping in, don't do what I'm doing here. Please make sure that you're putting the corner on the six and a half inch width. The second sew and flip I'm going to do with the folded corner clipper. And you can see here to do this, we place our square on and then we line up the measurement of the small square with the folded corner clipper tool before removing the fabric and then taking it to the machine and sewing a quarter of an inch.
With that one now sewn, we simply just need to press our sew and flip corner out and then we will move on to beginning some of the base construction for our block. We're going to begin now by sewing our two half square triangles together that form the top of the tulip. To do this and make sure that we have snug seams, I'm just going to give one of these a quick clip and press that seam allowance in the opposite direction to allow me to nest these for where I start to sew them together. I'll do a freeze frame in a moment and show you what that looks like before taking it to the machine and sewing our quarter inch seam. Part of the reason we clipped our seam before was to make sure this nests and sews together nicely. It was also to help control the bulk so that we don't have eight, uh, four pieces of fabric coming together there. To further protect this and remove even more bulk, I am actually going to press this seam open. Once that's done, we'll start putting our leaves together by placing our small rectangle of background fabric background fabric even on the top of each of these making sure that we have the correct orientation from the pattern. With those now sewn the logical step would have been to sew these on either side of our stem but after I press these up towards the small background rectangle I decide to take my half square triangles and sew them to the top of my tulip. I don't know why it is the way it is. So with those now pressed, I will grab our pieces for our tulip and we'll sew them. No, we won't. We won't sew those together. Someone put the sew and flips on the wrong length of our tulip body. Please make sure when you are doing this that you sew your sew and flips with the width being the six and a half inches and not the five and a half inches that is the height. So because I can't sew that together, let's sew our stem in between our two leave units and press both of these towards the stem. move back to sewing our tulip together and as I said before please make sure that you're putting your sewn flips on the six and a half inch width and not the five and a half inch width and there we go by the magic of television we have the right size and now I can sew my two half square triangles to the top of this one and then sew this to the stem and the leaves and our block for this week will be done. Thanks for joining me again this week folks if you haven't done so already like my video share it with a friend or subscribe if you haven't already done so most important tickle that little bell icon and you won't miss a thing bye for now and i'll see you all again next week